Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the Haber process and the contact process, which are two different processes covered in the C6 unit. So first up, let's look into the Haber process. So the Haber process is used to produce ammonia gas, which is then used to create fertilizers, which can be used for lots of different things, as we know. So first up, let's look at the equation of the Haber process. So as you can see, we have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas gives us ammonia gas. So what are these two arrows talking about here? So as you can see, we have an arrow going this way and this way. So this means the reaction is reversible. When it goes this way, we have an exothermic reaction, so it releases heat, and this way it has an endothermic reaction, so it absorbs heat and takes it in. So let's look more into detail into the reaction. So we have nitrogen and hydrogen gas reacting, right? But where did these gases come from? So the nitrogen gas comes from air, and the hydrogen gas comes from natural gas. So this is important to remember because you may get asked about this. Next up, let's look at the different conditions we need for the Haber process. So first up, the temperature. So we, the Haber process has a 450 degrees Celsius temperature. So this is really important, so make sure you remember this, these exact numbers. So why is it a 450 degrees temperature? Well, because we're looking to compromise because if we have a too high temperature, it will turn endothermic. But if the temperature is too low, then the rate of reaction is going to be really slow. So that's why we're compromising between yield and rate in this scenario. The other next condition we're going to look at is pressure. So the pressure we use is 200 atm. So why do we go for 200 atm? It's because we're compromising here between cost and yield. A higher pressure does mean more ammonia because the rate of reaction is higher, but a higher pressure does give a higher cost. So we are trying to save more money here, and therefore we compromise at 200 ADM. And this is also really important you remember this. And last up, you need to remember that the reaction has an iron catalyst. So the iron catalyst basically just speeds up the reaction and decreases the time taken to reach equilibrium. And it's also cheap, so it does help the reaction a lot. So now let's look at a reaction in a little bit more detail. So as you can see, we start with our nitrogen and hydrogen gas, and then it goes through this, which is the converter. And in this converter, we have our 450 degrees Celsius temperature, our 200 atm pressure, and our iron catalyst. And then what we have produced is liquid ammonia. So the gas is cooled down so until it's liquid, and then, as you can see, liquid ammonia. But what is this arrow for here? So this arrow is for the unreacted gases, and so they're recycled and put back into the process, as you can see. So that's it for the Haber process. Now let's move on to look at the contact process. So the contact process is used to produce sulfuric acid. So what is, it's basically made from sulfur, oxygen, and sulfuric acid. We'll get more into that later. So sulfuric acid, the uses of it could be for paints, detergents, fertilizers, but there are some risks. One common one would be acid rain. So now it's really important that we, will, that we have to look at the steps of the contact process and exactly the equations. So there are four equations you need to know. Stage one would be the production of sulfur dioxide. So we start with sulfur and we burn it in air and then we get sulfur dioxide. So this reaction is irreversible, and it's important to remember that. Stage two is when we go from sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. So we have sulfur dioxide plus oxygen gives us sulfur trioxide. So this is the sulfur dioxide from stage one. Then it is important to know that this reaction is reversible. The conditions for the reaction that we need are a catalyst, which is vanadium oxide. You need to remember these. A 450 degrees temperature and a 2 atm pressure. This is because the higher pressure in this sign does lead to higher risk. And this is we use it as an exothermic reaction in terms of the contact process. So now we move on to stage 3. So stage 3 leads to the production of oleum. So we have sulfur, sulfur trioxide plus sulfuric acid, and it gives us oleum. So you may be thinking, why are we adding sulfuric acid here? 
It's more of a safety step, which is to re- minimize the risk of sulfuric acid clouds forming. We'll talk about this in the next step. So our last step would be we have oleum, which is from, again, step three, plus water gives us sulfuric acid. So why, do we add, why did we add the sulfuric acid earlier and then get oleum? So the direct addition of sulfuric tri- sulfur trioxide to water is extremely exothermic. And dangerous because of the le- because it may lead to formation of clouds of sulfuric acid. Therefore, we use oleum to minimize this risk. Therefore, these are the four stages you need to know for the contact process. And it includes some specific details like conditions for stage two. And it is important to remember why we why stage three and four happen. That is all for today's video. I hope these two processes are now a lot more clear. Thank you.